Hi there, my name is Ryan Alice, and I'm doing this video project on All That I've Learned by 28. Now I'd like to share with you a collection of some of the most important business lessons I've learned in the last 10 years. Let's get through them. First, don't get stuck in analysis paralysis. Take action now. Sometimes you're not going to see all the way to your end destination when you start. But just take the very first steps and the world will open up with new people, new resources, and new opportunity that enable you to achieve more than you can even fathom today. It's up to you to get out there and do it, to take the initiative, to take chances, and to make things happen. Investors don't invest in systems that go home at night. They invest in businesses that have systems and processes that can run even without the main entrepreneur having to be there. Don't be afraid of failure. Most people are afraid to fail. They worry constantly about not living up to expectations, about not making a mistake, or about trying something new. Because of this, most people never get started on the path toward reaching their goals and their full human potential. And thus, they assure themselves of the very thing that they are afraid of, failure and mediocrity. In order to become a successful entrepreneur, you'll have to pay your dues and fail a few times. You'll learn lessons, and only then will you be able to come through a winner. Well, you don't have to take wild chances, you do have to say, take some risk, and most importantly, you have to get started quickly. Recognition and praise are often bigger motivators than monetary compensation. Never forget that as you work to work with your team. Always communicate frequently and openly with everyone, including customers and stakeholders, during negative events. The worst thing you can do during a negative press event or downtime is be silent. Once you have 80% of the needed information necessary to make a decision, make the call. You will be right more often by acting quickly in learning and incrementally improving than by simply making a decision once all the information is available. By increasing the frequency of decision making, you will be able to achieve much more than simply by waiting longer. The next is that when things are going well, it's the right time to prepare for when things won't be going well. When you don't need money, get a credit line. When things are growing at 100% a year, think about your strategy of if a competitor were to come into your industry and make your product free. The next lesson is that building a business is sort of like moving something heavy. It takes time to get the inertia going, but once you do, inertia can begin to take over and things can start moving even more quickly. That comes from Jim Collins and the concept of good to great of the wooden wheel. The next lesson is that part of the CEO's job is to find and hire people who can do their roles much better than the CEO himself or herself could, at least twice as well. The next lesson is to build consensus about strategy and direction with the small core of your team and then share widely with your full company, at the same time taking in feedback with a large group of pe from a large group of people by having automated systems and processes that get feedback from their customers and the front lines all the way up to the senior management team. The next lesson is that when you see someone doing a good job, tell them right then and there. And if you can get into the practice of writing just one handwritten note a day that you can give to one of your team members, people will treasure those notes and you'll be able to achieve much more and people will love working with you. The next lesson is that there is great power in deadlines. All a deadline is, is a time at some point in the future at which you want something to happen and there'll be some consequences positively if it does happen and some consequences negatively if it doesn't happen. Deadlines in reality are almost always artificial and made up. But a good leader knows how to use deadlines to drive focus on a team and also after a key deadline is achieved and passed and a key milestone is achieved, giving the team a little bit of time to refresh and rejuvenate, which is a key part of optimal productivity. The next lesson is that to create a great organization, you must build a system to cultivate greatness in leadership potential in others. You should be investing in your brightest employees and in their potential to someday take leadership roles within your organization and to innovate and create for the future. You also want to give immediate and specific feedback, particularly about things that you want to be improved and or negative experiences more often. You want to give someone the ability to become great at whatever they do and mentor them along the way. The next lesson is that you want to make sure your incentive structure, both your 
monetary and compensation incentive structure as well as your intrinsic feedback mechanisms incentivize the right goals and the right behavior. You can take the most recent example of the Olympic badminton teams from China and Korea who purposefully tried to lose because there was an incentive structure from the people that created that game that if they lost they would actually be advantaged in the next round. Good leaders ensure that incentive systems incent the right behavior and the behavior that leads to customer value creation. The next lesson is that once you get past about 20 employees and you start to have different layers within your organization, you want to start conducting performance reviews that are written and documented, ideally on an online automated system, that includes 360 feedback. 360 feedback simply means that every person within an organization both your supervisor, your peers, as well as people who directly work for you, your direct reports, can give feedback on your leadership style, on your managerial style, on your performance, and on your productivity. And oftentimes the best feedback you can get is feedback from those who work for you. Yet for some reason, most performance reviews are always coming from a superior to a subordinate. Often subordinates can give the most valuable feedback for their superior. The next lesson is that all team members should have a, you should have a process in which all team members share their personal goals and their dreams with their teammates. Not only with the leader of that group, but with all of their team members. And once there is a holistic understanding of someone's true motivations and what drives them, they can often work much better as a team and you can create a managerial structure that aligns what they want to do with their life with the goals that you have for the company. The next lesson is that when you get to about 50 employees, hire a chief operating officer that can be your operational execution partner. They often say that entrepreneurship is doing something others won't for about 10 years so that you can do what others can't for the rest of your life. Entrepreneurship is an investment in your future, in your family's future, and in your ability to leverage your time and assets to create organizational structures that make a difference in the world. It is for many people something that's not right, but if entrepreneurship can be for you, it can be extremely rewarding and enable you to do things that many people are unable to do. Entrepreneurship is a special field, but if you can be part of it, it can be very exciting. Entrepreneurship is about passion, following a dream, and changing the world with plenty of craziness along the way, as Jeffrey Buskang says. The next lesson is that becoming a successful entrepreneur, it's not easy. You must have persistence, dedication, tenacity, and the ability to deal with adversity. It's not for everybody, but if it's for you, it can be rewarding. And if you can have the ability to get through this adversity by being deeply passionate about your mission, great things can be achieved. The next lesson is that you may not be able to do everything at once, and you want to take a long-run approach. While companies like Instagram might have sold at 13 employees for a billion dollars to Facebook, it often takes decades to build a company to be, have, have created enough value in the world to be worth a billion dollars. But that's okay, because even if it took 20 years or 30 years to build a company a billion dollars, you've still accomplished something that very, very few people ever accomplish. Play life and play business like a long-term game. And be good to everyone, respect everyone, and treat everyone with kindness and fairness. And karma will come back around to benefit you for the better. The next lesson is that if you presently, today, don't have the financial resources, the experience, or even a good business idea, particularly if you're a younger or a first-time aspiring entrepreneur, intern or get a job at a company you are passionate about and start learning Start getting experience and start building your network. The next lesson is to always focus on building quality and giving and caring authentic relationships with good, caring, quality, authentic people. At the end of the day, the people in your life end up enabling you to do things or to not do things that can enable you to make a difference. The next lesson is to regardless of what you're doing, make sure you're constantly learning and working, from people from whom, working with people from whom you can learn. You also want to take a proactive role in your personal planning and in your business planning and goal setting and in the evaluation of your results personally and professionally. Now, many people are afraid to ask for help from others, but if you ask for help, people are often willing to help. Just ask genuinely and find a way in which you can give back to them as well as them giving to you. Build relationships for the long term, not for the individual transaction. 
Get experience however you can, build your network, have confidence, and be in it to help others to win and to make a difference. And if and when you do succeed, give back. There are many brothers and sisters in our world who have not been as fortunate as we've been. Thank you so much for listening to this section on the business lessons I've learned. I look forward to chatting again soon.